Today we're gonna to be busting through some of those beliefs that you have about smoking and quitting. We've often been told different things and we believe that. So we'll be talking about habits and addictions. We'll be talking about whether you really are addicted to nicotine. And we'll be talking about what really does cause those withdrawal symptoms and how you can easily avoid the majority of that happening. That's got to be a bonus, right? Habit versus addiction. So if I said to you that you are not addicted to smoking, you are not addicted to nicotine, would that help you be able to quit more easily? Now chances are I probably I ask would. I you to consider who are the organizations that are financially benefiting from you thinking you're addicted. They are the companies that are getting either taxes from you or tobacco companies that are getting income from you. To continue to think that you're addicted. The true meaning of addiction is, a, is that your body will not survive without having that fix. We know that for some drugs that they're addicted to, the withdrawal symptoms are so severe that if they don't get some sort of replacement fix, they will die. The majority of the nicotine is out of your body within 24 hours of quitting. Many people I know have been able to not smoke for a day or more. And that might be at times when they're traveling, perhaps flying over the other side of the world, or maybe they've been sick. You might be able to reflect on when you've gone without a cigarette for 12 hours, 24 hours or several days. And you've even at times may have quit and not smoked for months. So the nicotine was completely gone within two days. Why do you go back to smoking? It's because you haven't dealt with the habit. You haven't dealt with the reasons that you started to smoke and that you continue to smoke. Your brain has not come up yet with new alternatives for you to do. So in building new neuro pathways in your brain, you are now already got a list of when you currently smoke, what you get out of it, and an alternative pleasurable activity that you can do that might take you just a short amount of time, perhaps the same amount of what it took you to have a smoke, that gives that brain the clarity and certainty that it needs that is an alternative option. So you can break that habit really easily if you replace it with an alternative. Do you believe you're addicted to nicotine? Most people do because that's what the companies have been telling you that nicotine causes you to feel a little bit of pleasure for a few seconds when you're smoking that cigarette, and maybe it does. Nicotine's a stimulant and it causes your body to get stressed because it increases your heart rate and your blood pressure. They also tell you that nicotine is what causes those withdrawal symptoms. Now please know that sugar is what causes those withdrawal symptoms because tobacco is cured in sugar water. Every time you're inhaling that smoke, you are taking in sugar into your bloodstream, which is causing your blood sugar to, to rise. And this is why diabetes is so prevalent in smokers. Sugar is seven times more addictive than cocaine, and sugar causes your brain to go and feel a little bit of pleasure. So what are you really addicted to? Nicotine or sugar? Now anybody that gives up sugar will find that they encounter certain withdrawal symptoms such as grumpiness, headaches, could be body shaking and even the brain just calling out and craving for sweet foods. It's like suddenly all these cakes and sweet things that you love are there that you've never seen before. So sugar is what causes your withdrawal symptoms and you can easily get around it by being prepared. 
And what I recommend to people is it's the blood sugar levels fluctuating. So I aim to regulate your sugar levels once you've quit by taking some healthy snacks. So maybe have a couple of grapes or a slice of apple or a couple of nuts at those times when you would normally have had a cigarette. Just small amounts of healthy foods that will help regulate your blood sugar. So you can easily overcome the majority of your withdrawal symptoms just by being prepared. So that for many people is a huge relief. That is what causes a lot of people to not want to quit because they're worried about how grumpy they're going to get. So it might be the opportunity for you to go back now and revisit the activity that you did on the times when you currently smoke and some replacement activities. Make sure that your brain knows that you are committed to this change and that you have the clarity of alternative things that you're going to do instead of smoking because this clarity is what's needed in your brain in order to make that permanent change. 